No. In our previous discussion, we discussed about reflection of light. We gave the definition of reflection of light, and we said that it was the bouncing back of light when it hits a reflecting surface. So if this is a mirror, and light falls on it, then the light is pushed back, and this is what we refer to as uh, reflection. The light falling on the mirror is called the light ray falling is called incident ray, and the light ray pushed back we call it a reflected ray. And we said that the angle between the normal and the incident ray is angle of incidence, and the angle between the normal and the reflected ray we call it angle of reflection. The angle between the incident ray and the reflecting surface, we call it glancing angle, is also the same as the angle between the uh, reflected ray and the reflecting surface, they call G. Now, the normal is perpendicular to the reflecting surface. It's perpendicular. And that will mean that automatically you see that our eye plus the G must be equal to 90 degrees. Similarly, this R plus this G is um, R plus G. Am I right? It well. So similarly, um, R plus G must also give us 90 degrees. Um, according to law 1, we said that the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. So they were all in this upper plane. And we've also mentioned that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. That was law 2. We went ahead to discuss the two types of reflection we said we have regular reflection which occurs on a smooth surface so this surface is smooth then we have irregular reflection occurring on a rough surface so in the smooth case when parallel rays fall on the reflecting surface the reflected rays also appear parallel or let's say they are parallel in the rough case, when parallel rays incident on the surface, the reflected rays are not parallel. They meet at some point. Not necessarily the same point, but they meet somewhere. After discussion on this, then we went ahead to uh, give what we mean by an image. So an image we said that is formed when uh, light rays what meet, and we said that we have two types. One is the real image. So we said real images are formed by the intersection of intersection of real rays, and if the image is virtual then it means that the rays intersecting are also virtual or apparent rays. Now, what you want to do today is, you want to stretch um, a bit about these images. So, let's look at formation of image in a plane mirror. Formation of image in a plane mirror. So, let's take this for our plane mirror. This is the rough surface. And this is our smooth surface, okay? This is our smooth surface. Now, let's assume that we have this object in the letter F. Light rays from the object falls on the mirror. So the incident on the mirror, this way. When light rays fall on the mirror, they are reflected. So they are reflected, pushed back. So if this is where an observer was, so this is the eye of the observer, then what does this see? 
he sees these light rays, the reflected light rays, he sees them as if they were coming from inside the mirror. So they will go back and form an image that we describe as a virtual image. So they will come as if the observer sees the light rays as if they were coming from inside the mirror and the image they form is virtual. So we use these short uh, dashes to represent virtual rays. So what are some of the things that we see here? Uh, that is the characteristics of images formed by um, plain mirror. So one, one is that the image formed is, as you can see, the image is virtual. That means that this kind of image cannot be formed on the screen. A virtual image cannot be formed on the screen. Firstly, then two, the image is upright. The image is upright. So maybe let's go to the next slide and discuss the next page and discuss this. So we said that the image is virtual. It means that cannot be formed on the what screen. The image is upright. Upright means that the top appears as top and the bottom also appears as the bottom. We don't have any image turning upside down. So it is in this format. Then the image is same size as the object. Same size as the object. That means that there is no magnification or if you like, we can say that the magnification is equal to 1. They later will discuss about this magnification. And the image is also found to be laterally inverted. Laterally inverted. So if you look at in our ray diagram that we drew earlier on, we place an object in the form of letter F, but the image formed was in the form of like a 7. So that means that lateral inversion means that the left hand side appears to be right and the right hand side also appears to be left. Then another thing that we see is that the object distance, which is the distance between the object and the, and the reflecting surface, so object distance u, is equal to the image distance. So this is the image. So if this image was V, image distance is V. So the distance between the object and the uh, mirror, which we call U, is our object distance, is the same as distance between the mirror and the image that is behind the mirror. So U is equal to a V. So there is another property then we realize that the image too is what erect so it's standing upright or erect so these are the properties of images formed by a plain mirror um let's look at another concept here we are looking at uh inclined mirrors inclined mirrors so here Let's assume that two mirrors, there is mirror one and that is mirror two. They are inclined in such a way that they form an angle theta between them. The number of images that they form N is given by the formula 360 degrees or 360 divided by theta minus one. So there is the number of images, n represent the number of images that an inclined, uh, two inclined mirrors would form. So for inclined mirrors, we don't have necessarily have only one of one image. The image will depend on the value of theta. Let's see an example. If you ask to calculate the number of images formed by two mirrors inclined at an angle of 60 degrees, so this will represent our what? theta. Then we quote our formula n is equal to what? We said n is 360 degrees divided by theta minus 1. 
so that means that we have 360 degrees divided by 60 minus 1. Now 360 divided by 60 will give us 6 minus 1, that is uh, 5. 5 images. So if two mirrors are inclined at an angle of 60 degrees, then the number of images they form is 5. What if two mirrors are inclined at an angle of 90 degrees? So we see that N will be 360 degrees divided by 90 minus 1. Uh, 90 goes into 360 how many times? That will be 4 times. So we have 4 minus 1 and that represents 3 images. 3 images. Um, so let's let's twist the, the, the question let's go to question number three let's turn it around now we are asked to calculate the angle of inclination theta between two mirrors if we know that the form an angle they form uh let's say two images they are forming two images so what do we see we we have n is equal to 360 degrees divided by theta minus 1. So here we are looking for theta. We, we can uh, make theta the subject here. So how do we make theta the subject? Um, so we we'll send this minus 1 across the equal sign. So you have n plus 1 is equal to 360 degrees divided by theta um, so we can make this whole thing over one and cross multiply when we do that we get theta bracket n plus one is equal to 360 degrees and therefore our theta we divide both sides by n plus one our theta is what 360 degrees Divide by n plus 1. So, now let's go to the next page. And keep in mind that our n is 2. Okay. So, we have finally found that our theta is 360 degrees. Divide by n plus 1. Maybe this is a formula you want to keep in your head also. So, we have 360 degrees. Divide by n. Remember, the question gave us was 2. So, we have... 2 plus 1. Now, this will be 360 degrees divided by 3. And 360 degrees divided by 3, I believe this will give us um, 120 degrees. So you see that if two mirrors are inclined at an angle of 60 degrees, uh, at an angle of 120 degrees, I beg your pardon, then the total number of uh, images deformed should be what? Two. Um, I believe we can bring our discussion to an end here. In our next discussion, we are going to look at the construction of the mirror periscope. We look at the construction of the mirror periscope. Um, until next time, I will say goodbye, but do well to subscribe to the channel.